Hello friends, this is Annie and I apologize off the bat for the poor quality of my voice. I am getting over, I hope, raging coughing sickness, i.e. a cold in which I cough a lot. So my voice is really shot and there will be little to no singing and possibly some coughing in this video and I apologize in advance. But without further ado, I thought I would do a video of stuff that sold last week because I kind of really like watching those from other people. It's a fascinating little voyeuristic glimpse into what other sellers, resellers are finding and selling and pricing and just stuff that's out there, possibilities, ideas. So, uh, you might not find these particular random, very random bits of this and that, but it might give you some ideas of similar, related, random bits of this and that to look for when you're out on your journeys. And there's nothing really spectacular or fancy in this um, list here. It's just random stuff that sold last week. So. Without further ado, and that was, I admit, rather a lot of ado, um, here's some stuff that sold last week. Okie dokie. So the first item is a vintage travel brochure. It's probably from the 60s, and it's kind of fun because it has this fold-out map in the center with different... Um, Pennsylvania attractions. I don't know a ton about the uh, allures of Pennsylvania, but it's a nice map. So there's that guy. And oh, I'll try to say where I found things. Um, I bought a ton of vintage travel brochures from um, an estate sale quite some time ago that they were in a box on top of a shelf jammed up against the ceiling and in the basement and it was just like the kind of thing that a normal person would not look into and it was truth be told kind of full of mice droppings and some of the paper had been eaten by mice but I sorted through it when I got home and took out the stuff that was good and there were still I don't know a few hundred and I sorted them by geography and listed them and stuck them in you know some uh, shoe boxes all labeled up and they sell once in a while you know pretty frequently usually between uh nine dollars and probably 18 top at the top depending on what they are and how old they are. It's clearly a family that had gone on tons of road trips and always picked up the bits of paper and kept them. So, Oh, and I should say that I got all those maps along with, I, I want to say, like four other bags of stuff that was more valuable for probably $25 altogether. Um, this was a family-run yard sale. They did, or estate sale, and they didn't really know or care if what they had was, you know, valuable or resellable. A lot of it was quite technical stuff for um, electrical engineering, uh, like high-end but old um, components, and a lot of that actually sold for a ton of money, I have to say. So it was a really good deal, and in a sense, these maps... <laughs> the ones that weren't eaten by mice were basically free or a couple cents each. So let's move on. Next is this um, little pin. It's like a tie tack or lapel pin size. It's teeny tiny, like a quarter inch. And it's probably from the 60s. It's like faux pearl and gold, not signed. Um, and you probably are supposed to wear it the other way around so your luck doesn't fall out of the horseshoe, but whatever. Um, and this, I think I got 
for free um, when I helped a relative with their estate sale, or I ran it actually, and there was lots of leftover jewelry in the end, which uh, she was kind enough to just tell me to take. <laughs> so this is one of those items, and so it was free, sold for like $9.50. Not a big deal, but I have a lot of these types of things. Um, next. So this one's kind of interesting. This is a Braille edition of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, which is one of the books somewhere in the middle, I believe. And um, it's actually in eight volumes, and they're oversized. It's quite expensive, as you can see here. Um, I believe Braille can be printed much more compactly, but this organization that does these makes them this way for whatever reason. And um, I picked this up at a Goodwill, I believe, and it cost $25, I mean $29 for this whole kit and caboodle of the eight volumes. Um, they really weren't sure what it was exactly, and... Although $29 is kind of a lot to pay for a book at a Goodwill, I figured it would be worth doing since it's an unusual item and these um, multi-volume Braille editions actually sell for quite a bit as far as I could tell, um, comps wise. And indeed this did sell for $75, a best offer. Um, plus expedited shipping, and I was happy to take the $75 offer because uh, this has been in my store for a while. Obviously, it's kind of something looking for the right person because, you know, it's like one book in the middle of the series. It's in Braille. It's big. Um, and the person who bought it wanted to get it across the country from the East Coast to the West Coast, in three days um, for someone's birthday, I think. And so they actually had to pay quite a bit of shipping. Um, usually this could go media mail for just a few bucks, but unfortunately for them, <laughs> they wanted it in a couple days. So we ended up going um, with priority and it was expensive. So I think they did end up paying 125, including the postage which doesn't go to me, so it doesn't matter in terms of my economics, but, you know, it was an expensive purchase for them, so it was, a, you know, a good sale, and I don't know, it was interesting. All right, next. This is, um, these are vintage Christmas tree ornaments from probably the 60s, you know, plus or minus 10 years. Um, and there are obviously in the form of gumdrops <laughs> and uh, they're kind of gross kind of cute I don't know but they sold pretty fast a few days I think so off they go to live on someone's tree oh and I got these at an estate sale amongst some junky rubble and yet another basement and again, it was a deal where I bought like several bags of little bits and I think the total was hmm, the $25 range, I'm not sure, something like that. But I got a lot of other stuff, mostly, oh, maybe in this sort of price range, sort of like $15 to $30 items, but a lot, a lot, a lot of them. Actually, I think this is also... No, I'm getting my seat so I was confused. Never mind. All right, next. This is a White House Christmas card that is from 2001. It's a George and Laura Bush one. It is auto signed by them. But it's, you know, it's kind of nice. It has a seal and it was actually printed by Hallmark, which I thought was interesting. They must just do a ton of them. And, um, Hallmark does them for some reason. Um, and, you know, whatever you feel about the 
Bush administration, number two. Um, it is a nice photograph. And there's like a America saw it mother and child painting up here in the corner, which is interesting. Must be in the White House collection. Cool. So it's a good sale. I think I might have taken slightly less than the price you see here, maybe in the $25 range. Gosh, I'm not very good at remembering these things. I guess that's what records are for. Um, next, this is another teeny tiny little vintage lapel pin or tie tack. Um, it's enamel, it's a leaf, maple leaf, and I actually have two of them. And this one sold for, I think it might have sold for 10. And it was actually going to Canada, believe it or not, shockingly. And the, again, these are really tiny. It's like, mm, it's like a, probably quarter inch or something. Um, cute little pen. Next. This is a vintage Christmas card from the 40s. And it's obviously a wartime patriotic theme with a cute puppy. This is a really nice graphic print. The background's silver. Oh, here's the full image. It's, you know, kind of nice, a nice uh, minimalism look, streamlined, and, um, it, you know, it's kind of fun. And inside, there's the cute doggy again. It's somebody's personal um, card. It has a little tape damage on it, but and it's small, it's like four by six, but it goes to show that you can sell a single Christmas card with a good image that's been used and has tape damage. Um, I have a ton of vintage cards. I have scored them at a couple different estate sales and I just have heaps and heaps and heaps of them. So when I have time, I, I uh, scan them or photograph them and stick them up and usually, you know, trying to anticipate the correct time of year and some portion of them sell. I feel like these cost, again, almost nothing. You know, in one of these estate sale halls where I got bags of stuff that I paid, you know, 20, 30, 40 dollars for at the most and it appeared to the people selling it like, like heaps of old trashy paper that no one would want, but to me it is 9.50. <laughs> it is Christmas cards worth nine dollars and fifty cents. Anyway, next, this is a little watch pendant. Um, again, this was free from my aunt's estate, I believe, and it's it's vintage. It's not um, high end or fancy in any way. I think it's probably mm, 60s, but it could be 80s, hard to say. And it does work. It is a wind up watch clock and it ticks. And this went overseas somewhere. Oh, I forget. Europe somewhere. And so there you go. Sorry, I'm not making this entertaining enough. I'm going to try harder. Next. Um, this, <laughs> this is a monkey on a banana leaf. <laughs> this is a um, Fitz and Floyd brand ceramic dish. I have no idea what you would use this for. Um, maybe. Hmm, I don't know. It's a few pieces of cut in half asparagus. Uh, toothpicks. Um, I don't know, but it's it's um I guess Fitz and Floyd did a series of this all white glazed ceramic stuff with monkeys. I also had some um salt and pepper shakers of monkeys that sort of hugged each other that matched this more or less, and so this brand is collectible. Um, this is, let's see, 1977. So not super old, but not super new. 
and it's signed and marked and dated and so here we go. Um, this probably took six months to sell. The salt and pepper shakers went right away. So that's a brand to look for if it's an interesting unusual piece. Next. Oh, here's a bottle of shampoo. This is the really glamorous part of my job. So this is an RA deal. Um, I paid a dollar for this. It sold for $18.50. I actually offered free shipping on this, which I never do. Um, because it's a, you know, mass produced consumer item. This brand actually is probably discontinued. It just filed for bankruptcy. So look out for nature's gate, I guess, and check comps. Um, I thought I would, I found a place to get nature's gate products for a dollar. So I thought I'd experiment and see how they sell as the bankruptcy proceeds. And this is this sold in a couple days and it sold for $18.50, which is crazy for a bottle of shampoo, but I also, it's heavy, so I shipped it in a padded flat rate, which cost me $7.55, so I made about 10 bucks. Well, yeah, with and then fees, so about 10 bucks. Oh, and my $1, so about 9 bucks. So that could be good in bulk. I did buy a whole bunch of it for a dollar a piece. Oh, not just this one, different kinds of things. So we'll see how that pans out. And if it doesn't pan out, I will have very clean hair or sell them in bulk for less money. All right, next. This is a record. It's a one-sided um I guess you would call it an Edison style, even though it's not an Edison disc. It's um, it's a little thicker than your average 78, it's a little older. Um, this is from 1901, and it's a patriotic song. Um, Pre-World War One, though, like significantly pre-World War One. Um, it's in reasonable condition for its age. It's not great. It does. It has um, little nibbles on the side, but they're not into the music. And this is the back. It's you know just nothing. So um, I actually put this on auction as an experiment, and I did the kind of auction where you can get offers, and I got several offers for more than it actually sold for. So that is a lesson to me um, to take the offers if they're high enough. I just honestly wasn't sure uh, if the right person would come along and want to pay more for this. So apparently not. Apparently they were not online that week and so this sold for $9.50. It came from a lot of um, 78 records I bought for $10 for about at least 50 records, maybe closer to 100 so, I have 50 cents probably into this. Next. Um, this is kind of interesting. This is just a little brochure of cocktail recipes. And what's interesting about it is that it was actually designed by Joseph Binder, who is an obscure but famous in some circles, graphic designer. Um, he was born in Austria in the turn of the century, like the late 1890s. And he did a ton of really interesting graphic work um, over the years. And this is just some commercial product project he got at some point um, for this liquor company. I think the, the inside is, um, for the era, really more impressively designed than it looks like today. Um, if you think about your vintage um, recipe booklets, they're not this nicely laid out, but it, with today's standards, it looks kind of run-of-the-mill. But I think the cover is what's really great. This illustration with the really graphic um, 
glasses and the cocktail shaker. Just the way he did the glasses, it's very minimalist. Was like, see how the the uh, highball glass has no bottom? It's just implied by the faceting. It's cool. And this is also printed in these great colors. This like teal, peacock blue, and gold and orange. It's just kind of evocative of the swanky Mad Men cocktail era. Um, I think I pulled up, oh look, I used the word swanky in there too. I guess that's how I feel about it. Um, I will show you some Joseph Binder stuff. Let's see. So he did these kind of um, travel posters in the 20s that are very iconic, although his name isn't that well known. This is this is a website from my graphic design um, guild, sort of, so it's hard to work, <laughs> but it looks good. So that's how we roll. Um, so in the 20s, he did stuff like that. And then a little later, in the 30s, he was doing stuff that looked like this. I think these fortune covers are great. I'd love to find one of those. Let's see if I can make it scroll. You have to, the interface is kind of not uh, super intuitive here. So yeah, I, th like this World's Fair poster and these fortune covers are really cool. So bolo those. Bolo, be on the lookout for that kind of work and then check out who designed it. Maybe it's someone famous. Um, and yeah, this one, look at that. That's cool. And later, oh again, look at that. I think, is that a poster? Oh, it's a magazine cover for Graphis. That's really cool. And see how the the windows are the type? You know, we get into the that stuff as graphic design types. Um, yeah, he did become a U.S. citizen. Uh, bef he emigrated here before the war, so he was not a Nazi, which is always a good thing. And he did some war work, again, very iconic. So look out for these too. Uh, yep, yeah, that's graphic design for today. And next, <laughs> um, next, please, please. Great, this site doesn't wanna let me go to the next tab either. <sighs> okay. This is a postcard, looks like this. It is, um, there was a series of these because I'm sure I have others or I've seen others. It's early, it's like 1906-ish and it's from Canada. It has a photo and some printing and some writing and it's a, an undivided back style. A uh, private postcard. So I don't sell that many Canada postcards, so I tend to pick them up because I'm kind of a Canada file. Um, but you know, once in a while, and this one it's actually a pretty famous um, touristy image. This this uh, Fort and Annapolis Royal. Um, fort place. I think I've, yeah, I've actually been there. Um, so it's not like, you know, some revealing image of something that's really different today. It's a tourist place that pretty much looks the same today, but it is old and it is kind of fun with the writing on it and everything. So that sold for, I think, $10 plus shipping to Canada. Uh, next, we have this pair of vintage cat eye sunglasses. They are kind of crazy, like super, super cat eye. I think these would be good if you were a villain of some sort, or maybe a hero of some sort. Um, I picked these up for five dollars at an estate sale along with some other glasses, and they sold for a best offer of seventy-five dollars in about two hours after I listed them. These went really fast. They're 
they are cool. <laughs> so there's those. And then these also from the same place. I got these for five dollars. That these are army issue um, World War II era um, flexible leg glasses in their original case and it has this whole thing about taking care of your glasses because it's expensive to give you more of them written on it and it's a little hard case and they're just Kind of boring wire rims, but the army part makes it more interesting. And I did list these under um, a military section, not a glasses section. And these sold for $65. And I want to say it was later the same night of the day I listed them. It was really fast. So another bolo. Next. Here is some slightly used old perfume. This is a teeny tiny bottle. It's probably an ounce of perfume. And it's vintage, but I don't know how old. And I know nothing about this brand, but I do know that when you're at an estate sale and you find something really smelly like this, you should look it up because <laughs> people are looking for these older things that may be out of stock or or out of, you know, discontinued, or smell different now, or they have nostalgia for some relative that used to wear it, or some such. So this did sell for asking price, and was within a couple days, if not one day, of having listed it. And, oh, this item I can't really show you because it's in the adult category and every page except this one is kind of graphic in a um, adult way. So anyway, this I found. <laughs> oh, I was at this crazy, crazy junk store in Maine, like way out in the boonies, not even like near a town, not near anything. This is an awesome store. I'm definitely going to go back there next summer. Um, and they didn't, it didn't have any electricity. <laughs> and it was like this kind of huge sprawling, um, probably a former truck garage or something. And yeah, no electricity. So it was really dark and they had some flashlights, but they didn't work. So I actually tried to look at things one day with my phone flashlight and then I actually came back the next day having borrowed a hiking headlamp from my boyfriend and that made things a lot easier and I spent quite a lot of time there because despite it being a uh, crazy crazy like horde of junk there were some great junk in there so I did pick up a bunch of paper items that were um, multifarious, just all kinds of things. And in part of that pile <laughs> was a bunch of some guy's mail, most of which I ignored, but some of which were these really 70s sex toy catalogs and uh, other um, advertising material of a similar nature. And they were kind of funny because they were so 70s, if you've ever seen anything like that. So I, uh, I don't know, I just picked it up on the off chance. And indeed, somebody did want this piece. The copy's really funny too, actually. So that's my, my foray into, into the um, profane, I guess. Next. Um, this is a teeny tiny little pendant. It's for uh, Indiana University Sports, intramural, and this is the front, and this is the back. It's got a little, I guess he's doing football or dancing. I can't tell. No, he's doing football. Um, it's from, obviously, 1927-28 season, 
and this actually belonged to a relative of mine, but I don't even know which one. It was again in stuff I found at my aunt's house, and we don't, we didn't even know. Or maybe she knew. I don't know. It, it belonged to somebody I was related to at some time. So off it goes on eBay, and this sold. No, I don't remember what it sold for. It was thirty-four fifty or less and it's teeny tiny it's like less it's like three quarters of an inch ish it's not real gold but it's old and it's probably you know rare at this juncture and last this is a mug obviously <laughs> that um, has different kinds of boats on it, sloops and yawls and catch, is catch, catch eye, catch, whatever, yachts, schooner, you know. And I picked this up, I think, at a thrift shop for a couple bucks a long time ago because I recognized the shape as being something that um, my dad had mugs like this on his sailboat when I was a little kid in the 70s, this um, particular cone shape and then a small, smaller top with the rubber on the bottom. And when you're on a sailboat, this is a good shape for your mug because it doesn't move around and it doesn't spill. And I, I just haven't really seen these around. And so I thought this would appeal to some, you know, sailor person. It is from the 70s as you can see and I think I probably paid a dollar 99 for it it did sit for a long time probably a year and sold for 22.29 I think that weird price is because I marked it down a bit it might have been I might have had it at like 25 28 or something um, yeah, but it did finally sell, and I hope it goes to some coffee-drinking yachtsman who doesn't spill his coffee from now on, or yachtswoman. By yachtsman, I mean yachtsman or a woman, or apparently child, because children are sailing across the ocean with some frequency these days, it would seem. Uh-oh, I'm babbling. So anyway, that's some stuff that sold on eBay last week. Um, I hope it was in some way interesting, despite my um, commentary, which I will improve upon in future future episodes, <laughs> editions. So thank you. Let me know if you have any questions about these items or um, anything. And I will talk to you again.